So last week, if you watched my coverage that I posted on Thursday of the January 6th Select Committee's first public hearing about the insurrection, you know that I was incredibly adamant about the fact that Donald Trump must be prosecuted because if you present us with this evidence of his various crimes, if you present us with evidence that he is the one that caused this insurrection and it all amounts to nothing after you've elevated the salience of this, then that communicates to the American people that elites will just never be held accountable regardless of how brazen they are. And worse, it communicates to elites that they will never be held accountable regardless of how brazen they are. And the reason why that's a problem, particularly in this case, is because if elites know that they can literally try to kill democracy and never be held accountable, well, they're going to do it again. Now, the January 6th committee, once they conclude their investigation, which isn't finished yet, to be clear, they can't prosecute Trump themselves. But what they can do is recommend that the Department of Justice prosecute Donald Trump file criminal charge, uh, charges against him and other high-ranking officials that were co-conspirators with Donald Trump's attempt to steal the election. But we are now getting mixed messages about whether or not they will do that. And this is a very, very huge problem because we're at a turning point. We have two options. We can either try to save what's left of our democracy by prosecuting the criminals like Donald Trump who tried to kill democracy and steal an election, literally, or we can choose to let it go and then let these people run for office and then stay in power in perpetuity because they know that nothing will be done regardless of how shameless they are in breaking the law and trying to kill democracy. So let's take a look at this article from NBC News because this is a really worrying sign. They write, the chair of the House Committee investigating the Capitol riot said Monday night that the panel will not make any criminal referrals, even though its leaders have previously hinted at the possibility of doing so. Quote, our job is to look at the facts and circumstances around January 6th, what caused it, and make recommendations after that, Chair Benny Thompson told reporters as he left the House chamber after the second day of public hearings by the panel. When pressed on the matter and whether the committee had ruled out the possibility of referring criminal charges, particularly for former President Donald Trump, Thompson replied, we don't have authority. But the committee's vice chair, Liz Cheney, suggested later on Monday that a decision was not yet final. The committee has not issued a conclusion regarding potential criminal referrals. We will announce a decision on that at an appropriate time, she said in a statement on Twitter. Representative Elaine Luria tweeted in a separate statement that the committee has yet to vote on recommending criminal referrals. If the criminal activity occurred, it is our responsibility to report that activity to the Department of Justice, she said. Representative Adam Schiff, one of three California Democrats on the committee also weighed in during a CNN interview Monday when asked about Thompson's remarks, saying, we haven't had a discussion about that, so I don't know that the committee has reached a position on whether we make a referral or what the referrals might be. I thought we were deferring that decision until we concluded our investigation. This is a very, very worrying sign because you have multiple members of the select committee saying different things. On one hand, you have Benny Thompson, the chair, saying, we just don't have that authority. And then you have others like Liz Cheney, the vice chair, saying, no, we haven't made up our minds yet. And then you have others like Adam Schiff saying, oh, well, I thought we were going to make this decision later. Folks, I need you to understand that you've all got to get on the same fucking page here. This is no laughing matter. Take this seriously. And that's not to say that I think that they are incompetent. I think they did a phenomenal job at presenting that evidence. I gave Liz Cheney credit, which was painful to do if you saw my video. I don't want to give her credit for anything, but I think that she did a good job here. I think that this committee has exer you know, exerted a level of competence that I didn't expect, honestly, because my expectations were very low. But this right here is awful. It's a horrible sign. You have to get on the same page. If you haven't made a decision yet, you all have to say collectively, we'll withhold an announcement until we've concluded our investigation. Otherwise, don't respond to questions like this. Don't respond to questions like this. So what are Republicans going to say in the event they do conclude that there should be a recommendation for criminal charges? Oh, well, I thought that the chair said that you don't have that authority, so you shouldn't recommend this if you don't have that authority. It's the mixed messages are a huge, huge problem. Now, ultimately, they don't have the authority to file charges to prosecute Donald Trump, but they absolutely have the authority to recommend the DOJ take action. And if you just 
present all of this evidence of criminality and you don't make an explicit recommendation and you leave it up to Merrick Garland's co coward ass, fuck all will be done. Nothing will be done. Do you understand why this is a problem? So when Obama took office, he chose to move forward, not prosecute the crimes of George W. Bush. And we know what happened. War crimes continued by the U.S. government. Obama did it himself. So if Biden comes in and refuses to prosecute the last administration after they try to literally stage a coup, guess what's going to happen? It'll happen again. Everyone is watching right now. Everyone is watching. And the question we're all asking ourselves is, are we going to have a democracy going forward or are we going to allow the people who staged a coup to get back in power? And it seems as if the latter is the more likely possibility. Not that I'm shocked by that, but the fact that the chair is saying we don't have that authority to make a recommendation, then what's the point of all of this? You're just broadcasting to us what's going to happen to us in a couple of years. Now, also, because they're sending mixed messages, they're feeding into narratives like this, espoused by Republican Congressman Ronnie Jackson, who tweeted, the witch hunt committee announced they won't be making any criminal referrals, not one, just like the Russia collusion lie. The whole thing was another Democrat hoax. They knew they had nothing, but dragged it out anyways. A total waste of time and taxpayer dollars. Now, he's lying. What he's saying is factually incorrect. There is a plethora of potential crimes that were committed. So if you tell us what they did, the crimes that they committed, including the crimes that Donald Trump committed, and you don't recommend charges, that narrative is going to be the prevailing narrative. And they're, it's not like they're doing a bad job. I don't want to say that the select committee on January 6th is failing because they're very clearly doing a good job. As MSNBC's Kyle Griffin reports, a morning consult poll shows that 63% of Americans believe DOJ should bring legal action against elected officials who misled Americans about the outcome of an election. 67% believe DOJ should bring legal action against elected officials who attempted to overturn the results of an election. Now, I understand that prosecuting the former president is no small thing. It's huge, right? But if you don't hold them accountable, and you don't have the guts, the spy needed to hold them accountable, then step down. Merrick Garland has been a complete disaster as an attorney general because time after time, he doesn't just let former Trump officials go, but he continues Trump's legal legacy, defending the indefensible, just keeping the status quo as is. So if you're not going to do anything in that position, and do your fucking job, quite frankly, then you need to step down. Biden needs to fire him. Because after we see evidence, after every American sees evidence that Trump literally committed a crime in trying to stage a coup and steal democracy, and he's just going to be allowed to run again, nothing matters. Elites can get away with everything. And Trump has already remade the Republican Party in his image. The Washington Post reports about a third of the way through the 2022 primaries, voters have nominated scores of Republican candidates for state and federal office who say the 2020 election was rigged, according to a new analysis by the Washington Post. Now, as you can see, these are Republicans at the federal and state level who can work in tandem to steal an election if it doesn't go their way. Attorneys general in certain states can reject their state's certifications of elections. And then members of Congress who are newly elected can reject the certification of the next presidential election. We're headed for a disaster scenario where out in the open, Americans can elect a new president and that president doesn't take power because we have a bunch of Republicans who are willing to steal that election away from the American people. I don't think people in power understand how serious this moment is, or if they do understand, they're just too afraid to do what's needed to prevent this from happening. Prosecuting President Donald Trump is going to be a disaster for Democrats. Absolutely. Because when the next president, who's a Republican, comes to power, they're going to try to open any, you know, dumb investigations into Democrats for everything. But either you believe in protecting democracy and you're willing to do that because it's necessary or you don't and you're too big of a coward. If that's the case, you've got to step down. So look, we don't necessarily know what's going to happen. We don't know if they're going to make recommendations because we're getting mixed messages. They should recommend charges for Donald Trump. But ultimately, this is going to come to um, Merrick Garland and what he chooses to do. And if they don't nudge him in the right direction, he's not going to act because he is a fucking useless coward. So 
understand this is a pivotal moment in American history. And we're either going to maintain what's left of our democracy or we're going to let these authoritarians steal it away from us. This will come down to what people in power do right now while they still have power. If they do not prosecute Donald Trump and the criminals who created this situation, democracy is done in the United States. Do you enjoy watching independent news shows like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, and The Majority Report, but oftentimes YouTube doesn't deliver our videos to your subscription box? Well, I've got a solution for you. It's called the Opt Out app, available right now in the iOS App Store, coming soon to Android. Opt Out is an app made by and for progressives where they take all of the most popular independent news shows and they put them in one convenient location. You'll find all your favorites on there, like The Humanist Report, The Rational National, The Majority Report, and the app is updated multiple times per day, so your news feed is constantly up to date. If you enjoy watching independent media, this is the app to get. Download it today. Do yourself a favor and click the join button on YouTube to become a member. Because Mike's doing a great job getting to watch his videos before everyone else is tremendous. Many people are saying this. Join today, folks. You won't regret it.